morning and welcome back to So What If I Sew or welcome if you're new this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related and today I'm bringing you a sew along that I have been so so excited to do um, but I wanted to make sure you guys want to sit too so I popped it on the pole and you guys all agreed with me yay as you can see this is the Rose Claire dress sew along the Rose Claire dress is from Cashmerette and what's special about the Rose Claire well firstly it's got it's absolutely stunning it's gorgeous it's a wrap dress for woven fabrics um, but I can hear many of you saying well there's lots of wrap dresses out there now it's special because cashmere normally specialize in plus size patterns however they have now decided to do a wonderful thing where they grade some of their patterns down to straight sizes um, however with they include proper cup sizes so I can now get a size 8 wrap dress that has a G to an H cup in the actual wrap front and so, this is magical, I may actually have a wrap dress that fits me properly that I don't have to grade between three sizes and that will actually look nice. Um, the size 8 measurements for the G and H cup do actually fit my body perfectly so I'm really excited. Um, I've put a little shot of the measurements here because I thought some of you would be interested to see the steps because the issue is there's lots of lovely wrap dresses out there so there's the by hand um yeah by hand under Hannah which is lovely but again the advanced cup size is only in the plus size so I don't see why I should buy something and then have to take it apart and completely adjust it um to maybe like I mean I'm not the best at full bust adjustments I don't like doing them um but I don't feel like I should have to to make a garment fit me, especially when there is a D cup available, but it's only available in the plus sizes, which is stupid. Um, sorry, this is a personal uh, frustration of mine. But this dress may solve all of my problems. So there are three views of this dress, which are beautiful. Um, I will be mixing and matching. So I'm going to make the shorter length, but with bishop sleeves. I've never done bishop sleeves before. Uh, but I think they are absolutely stunning, so I will be giving them a go. Also, uh, because of my fabric and bishop sleeves choice, uh, Yvette from Blossom Sandwich has agreed that that can count as my So 70s pattern, uh, So 70s challenge entry, um, because basically I hate most 70s clothing and it's not a colour palette that suits me or I like. Um, however, I would love to get involved, and this fabric is as brown as I'm willing to go, really. <laughs> So if you haven't checked out the Sew so 70s challenge already, please do. Yvette is hosting, but she's got all sorts of wonderful, wonderful uh, sponsors on board. I think she's co-hosting with Hey Sew so Sister, actually. But yeah, go and check out um, her link below. Um, so on to the fabric. And of course, I've had my pattern quickly printed by uh, Pattern Printing Girl, Natasha, who is fabulous. Uh, it was done so quickly, a couple of days. And now I've got the whole thing in A0 because I hate piecing together PDF patterns. So very excited, as always, to use my lovely A0s. And then I have the digital file so I can reprint it anytime I like. Now, fabric. I am using some beautiful fabric from the rag shop, which, as I mentioned, is as brown as I'm willing for it to be. It's a black background, uh, slightly opaque, viscose shelly. It's got a little bit of stretch in it. Uh, but it's got these lovely pink and brown flowers which I'm holding up to you now um, it's like pink brown and yellow kind of ochre and I think it's beautiful and I think it's gonna look absolutely fantastic as a wrap dress also because it's a viscose chalet it drapes look at that it's just oh it's beautiful it just moves about and I love it um, and it will work really well for a wrap dress because it won't crease horribly so this is the fabric I'm using. I think I've got two meters. I may have three actually because I was going to get it for something else. So I can't remember. I, I think I have more than two actually because I have a lot. Ugh, there's so much of it. There we go. Um, but I have pre-washed it already. I washed it on 30 with my laundry egg at standard and that worked fine. So I will be doing the size 8 which has got the 36, 26, 36 measurements, which is me. And otherwise, it's going to be a nice standard sew along. It's been a while since I've done a proper sew along with you guys, and I'm really, really excited. Um, I should say as well, the background of this is black, so I am just going to be using black thread. Um, I really don't think you'll see it at all. Um, and I do have some, like, dusty pink thread of this colour if I want to do any accent stitching, which I will consider. But otherwise, let's get going.
So when I said I was uh, making an eight earlier, I got confused because it's American sizing. So I'm making a size two in the pattern, which I think equates to a UK eight. So here we are, I've got all my pattern pieces. I just thought I'd show you. So the way the cup sizes work is you get a different size, like you get a different download for each size bracket. So I've done the G to H and what's really nice about that is then it means that, you know, there's no separate lines, it's just sizing lines. That is the size of the dart, which I'm already excited by because that shows that this has been done properly. Um, for anybody who's, you know, not done an FBA before or is kind of in the same boat as me, it'd be really interesting to know if you have this issue too. Whenever I do a full bust adjustment, my darts always end up this size and they make an absolute nonsense of the original pattern. So I'd be really interested to know if anyone else has that issue. But otherwise, I'm so excited. I should also quickly say this fabric is absolutely stunning. So this is the wrong side. This is the right side. How vibrant. I just noticed how good the light is. How vibrant is that colour? Like, I'm so, so excited. And you can see, like, it's got a tiny bit of stretch in it, which I think is going to be really, really flattering as a wrap. So there we go. Uh, let's get pattern layouts done and let's do some cutting out. room and I've got next to me the product bag full to burst with packing pieces and we're going to kick off with some stay stitching now there's a couple of points on this pattern I found really interesting which is firstly um they specify the direction you should stay stitch in which I think is quite interesting so it's top down so I'll make sure I do that and then we're going to so prepare those pieces and then I think we straight away attach the front bodice to the back and got our wrap going. I did actually read this pattern, which I never do normally. I kind of find it out along with you guys, but I've been so excited to see it that I've had a good read through. And I'm, I'm really excited. There's a really cool bit with the darts where they've really considered larger busts. So we'll get to it later on because we're going to see how I prefer it. But apparently, if you press darts up, they look better on a larger bust, which is, I'd never thought about, but I'm looking forward to trying. Um, but yeah, so little bits like that in the pattern I thought were great. In terms of cutting out the pieces, I thought the instructions on the pieces were lovely and clear. It would be really helpful if there could be colour differentiation on the lines for the pattern sizes because I found them quite tricky to follow. Like I know you can highlight them but in certain places they were all very 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 close together and I couldn't, I just couldn't see where my line was even meant to be to highlight. So just, just one thing but I really liked how clear it was how many of each thing you had to cut and like what view what's relevant to you. I thought that was really really good. So let's get going, let's do some stay stitching. So here we are, we have a lovely bodice with a variety of darts, so we've got two darts in at the back, which 
which are hopefully visible there. I need to give them a stronger press, but we've got them. And then we've got a large bust dart at the front, which I'm going to sew to the top and cut off the edge as the pattern suggests. And we've got another little waist dart down here. So there's quite a nice fit, actually. Let's have a wee look. So there we go. Let's pop it over. So let me get that shoulder seam in the right place. Where is it? There we go. Right on top of the shoulder. That is the bust rim there, so it sits like that. I find the bust rim is slightly off to one side. I'm not sure why that is, but maybe it'll fit better when like it's got waist seams and a dress and like a skirt and everything. Maybe it's made to hang differently because we're also going to be binding the neckline. So it might be it comes a little further round. But there we are. So that's pretty much the shape of the wrap. It's quite pretty. And the back is, I'm getting my hair out of the way, the back's quite nice and neat as well. Obviously I'm holding the side seams because we're not doing those just yet. The next step is in fact a bishop sleeve. Now I've never done a bishop sleeve. There's a lot of body in them. They're big and flouncy. There's a picture on screen now if you don't know what they look like. And I, yeah, I just think they're stunning. But they look a bit weird when you cut them out. So this is the pattern piece for a bishop sleeve. So as you can see, it's got, it's, I thought it would be like a big bell, but it's not. So we have this and then we have a bell. And the point of this is to create fullness on like one side more than the other. And that's the side that's basically, so this is, this is the front here. And this is the back where the bell mostly is. So if I put that around my sleeve, you can see the bell sort of falls to the underarm. So that when you stand, you get some ballooning underneath rather than a big puff on top. So they're gonna look really pretty. Um, here is the piece here. Um, but what we have to do before we put these in, we do insert them flat by the way, but what we're gonna do first is there's two notches. There's one of them, where's the other one? There it is. There's two notches, which I'm pulling open for you to see. We're gonna sew two lines of gathering stitches here, right within the seam allowance. And then I'm gonna insert both sides and then pull those gathers so we get a really nice little ruche on top of the shoulder there. So let's sew those gathers and then I'm going to time lapse doing one of them for you and then show you it just before I sew it so you can see what it looks like and then I'll do the other one. I don't know what's kind of most helpful here to show you guys but fingers crossed um, I will be able to explain it well. I'm nervous of explaining it now because obviously I've never done it before so I'd kind of like to have a go at one and then show you guys what I've done and hopefully all will make sense. I've got a sleeve this is really fun um so let me just try and show you it so there's gathering at the top and then standard flat insertion there um I would recommend extending your gathering or basting stitches further along than it says because I did the amount of gathering suggested and I still didn't nearly have enough room uh, for the rest of the sleeve so I just did a little bit of extra hand kind of pleat gathering and actually I really like the effect it's really like, I don't know if you can see that because it's black fabric, it's hard to demonstrate. Um, but I've got like a nice puff on the shoulder. If I put my hand under it, you should be able to see it. There we go. So yeah, I'm really chuffed with that actually. I think it looks pretty. Um, hold on, it's such a big sleeve. I'm trying to put it on my shoulder in the right place. There we go. So I'm, I'm quite chuffed with that actually. There we go, nice little puff. Uh, so let's pop the other side in and then yeah, I am, oh, I'm, honestly, I'm having such a good time doing this. I'm so excited. Um, I'm working a wedding tomorrow, so I'm kind of hopeful that if I get this in do done in time, I'll be able to wear it because it's black, like all my other event clothes, but it's kind of floral, so I feel like it, it's probably fine. <laughs> it's between this and my Nina Lee Carnaby dress, because the problem is it's also going to be 30 degrees tomorrow. So I need to be comfortable. Um... And I'm thinking something looser might be more comfortable, but we'll see. Let's pop the other sleeve in and then meet back here. So 
here we are, two sleeves on, I've got it on a hanger now, which is easier for you guys to see. And we've got a lovely amount of gathering at the head of these sleeves. I love it, it's so pretty. So the next step now is we, um, we take a moment away from the bodice to make our waist ties. So um, I just wanted to say at this point, the instructions, you guys know I always comment on the instructions. I think they're fantastic. I haven't had a second of doing these instructions where I've gone, what does that mean? They're really clear. I don't know. They're just very concise. They're very clear. The diagrams are actually very good um, and non-confusing, which is nice. I like diagrams, they're important. The instructions are split up well. Uh, they're really good at like reminding you to do both. Like in some instructions, they tell you how to do the sleeves and they give you the instructions for one sleeve. Whereas this is really detailed. It says, you know, do like insert gathering stitches, pop the sleeve in, gather, then close. And then it says, repeat steps one to three for the second sleeve, which I know is a silly thing, but there's loads of patterns that forget to go back, for example. And um, like in the M7131 collots that you guys know I love, I will hold my hands up and say the waistband instructions are that are useless. They are actually beyond useless. And there's lots of patterns that tell you to put basting stitches in, for example, and never tell you to take them out. Or bits like that, which I think is really lazy. I think they kind of like assume you'll take them out. But if you're a beginner and don't know, that's kind of useless. So it has to be said, the instructions for this, wonderful. And if it keeps going the rate it's going, this is, I think, going to become a tried and tested pattern for me. This is going to become something I wear a lot. So here is the top of my bodice. Very exciting. Let's get our waist tied out. They desperately need a press because they're quite long. Um, and I've just been folded up in my bag, which is really bad and then we will make those together. So um, we're now on to the waist ties and here is one I made earlier. You may notice a small outfit change because I took advantage of the sunshine. I went outside, it's very hot, so I've changed and I'm a little bit sunburnt here. So I want a top that just covers it so that it doesn't get any more accidental exposure today. Anyway, waist ties, here they are, they're quite short is the first thing I would say, and quite hard to hold apparently, um, and incredibly fiddly to make. I'm seriously tempted to do the second round with my uh, rolled hem foot, but we'll see. I might try and just do them both the same way. So we need two of these. What you start with is a piece this long. So this is, this is the right side, that's the wrong side. So the first step is you fold it wrong sides together, so it's in half, there you go. And then when you've got a crease down the middle, you fold, you kind of open it out again, so you'll have a big line down the middle. And then you do like a little half fold from each edge to the middle, like so. There we go. So you end up with that, and then it will fold in on itself and you stitch down the edge. But the first step is to basically put all those folds in with the iron, so creasing it all. And then before you sew it down, you wanna open it out again, fold down the raw edges, and then include them in the folding. So that way you get a completely closed end, like that. So there we go, let's make our second one together. Um, after reading on a little bit in the pattern, I have understood. So we have one tie indeed on the inside and we have one on the outside. That is correct. We have sewn up both of our side seams. Now that is correct because 
When we bind the neckline, we're going to end up with extra at each end, and that's what we're going to then tie on to these fixed ties to the bodice. So that makes sense because I was like, how on earth do you tie it? So this is the top on so far. I've got one tie here on the inside, one tie on the outside, and now we're going to move on to popping the cuffs on my beautiful bishop sleeves, which will be very fun. So First of all, we need to interface those, so we've got two strips like this. It tells you to do it at the beginning, but I actually prefer to do it when I get there, it's just easier. Um, so I'm going to interface these, and then I think we fold them like that, and then we're going to attach them, so it's quite a big cuff. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it, it's going to be fun. What we've got to do with the sleeves is we've got our interfaced cuffs here. What we're going to do is fold these in half. Um, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to iron in a little fold because we're going to unfold them in a second. Um, and what we are going to do is we're going to sew the ends together. The, uh, what should I say, the short ends together. Um, and then we're going to sew a line, or well, two lines of gathering stitches around the cuffs of the sleeves. We're going to pull them in so they're the same um, diameter, I should say, as this. And then we'll slip this over the sleeve, sew around this top edge, and then we're going to fold it back on itself, like so flip it and then basically stitch in the ditch round to secure that cuff so obviously like this will end up being a lot smaller because it's going to lose about that at each end and then also let me fold it to show you so it's going to end up about that thick around the wrist I've done mine in quite a stiff interfacing because honestly it's all I had in um, so I hope it's okay but yeah so let's sew our gathering stitches first and then we can pop these on and sew it around. What I'll do is I'll do one side first, like I did with the sleeves originally, so I know what I'm doing. And then I'll do the second side, show you more of the stages, because I think that's gonna be easier to explain what I mean. Um, whereas trying to explain when I actually don't know what I'm doing is quite difficult. <laughs> so I will, let me have a go, and I'll film it and then come back to you and all will become clear. have one I put some stage photos in because I hope that helps but here we go this is it from the inside and hopefully it doesn't look hideous from the outside oh, I'm already enjoying this amount of puff that's quite fun right let's have a look so there we go um I won't lie it's really fiddly um I couldn't get it round the arm of my sewing machine because it's very small so that was quite frustrating and I do wonder in future if I would actually do it with a band the same size as that and just elasticate it for comfort. But if I try it on, so I've done the left arm. It's actually, it is a little tight. I will say that. And I am the right size for this, this size bracket, everything else fits. But I would say actually the sleeve is, is really tight and it's pulling down. So on the next one I make, I think I'm just gonna make the band the right size for the whole sleeve and then just elasticate it down because that is you can see how tight that is it's really gripping in but i'm hoping we'll try it on with when it's got a skirt and everything because it might sit differently and we'll put the other side on as well and see how that sort of works how that comes to be because it is i think it's also meant to be like down here but it's it's just not 
Um, so that's quite interesting. But yeah, like that's really, I can't extend my arm without that really pulling. So I'm just gonna basically stretch that out until it is comfortable. But that, that's a real letdown actually. I'm quite sad about that because I love these sleeves. But I was hoping it'd be more like down here in puffy, whereas actually I can't fully straighten my arm in that. And it's the right width, it's, you know, but it's like cutting off the circulation a bit to my arm. So we'll see ways I can stretch this. And I just won't be able to reach up in this dress because as you can see, it's so tight on my arm that's pulling it up to my to my bust. So that's it's a real shame that actually, I'm quite sad about that. But that's okay, let's do the other arm. And then we can go from there really and see how I can make this work for me. Now we are going to put the bodice to one side and we're going to work on the skirt. So there's four skirt pieces in total, two back, two front. Um, and the back ones are um, kind of standard slight bell to the outside and straight edge. The front ones have obviously continuing the line of the wrap dress. So let me get these ones I think are the front. I need to give them all a press really. Yes, these ones are the front, wonderful. So you can see this one has more of a like a diagonal edge on it so we'll have two of those and they will continue down the line from the bodice down the dress so there we have it lovely so i'm going to give these a press first and then i'm going to give the back pieces a press and we're just going to sew it together as four panels so i'm going to do that on a time lapse because it's, it's not really that interesting and then i'll come back to you It's very sunny out. <laughs> I have a skirt that took a while to figure out how the pieces fit together. Um, I don't think I cut them out as neatly as I could have, which caused me some issues, but that's okay. We now have a skirt, so I'll stand up and show you the fit. So we get a full wrap in both directions. And it's actually a lovely length on me. It's a little uneven, but I'll go through and hang it tonight and then hem it. So I'm gonna pop it onto the bodice now and then we've got a finished dress for today. And then I think I'm gonna to take tonight off and then come back tomorrow morning and do all the binding around the neckline because I kinda of like to be quite alert and sharp to do that. So let's pop this in the bodice and then we're ready to go. Here we are, I've popped the skirt on now, which is just a very, very simple attachment. You just stick them together, match it up and do it. I need to finish off the inside edge, but, so hang on, if this ties on the outside, then it goes right side, under, left, over. That's actually quite cute, that's not bad. Uh, the fit across the bust is again a little loose at the moment because it's gonna lose some of the neckline for the binding. But I like it, the sleeves are cute. Yeah, I can't really lift my arms up, but, you know, it's not the only dress I've got that issue in. <laughs> and I'm hoping a couple of washes will soften up and stretch these because I do always have my sleeves up to my um, elbows anyway. So I'm hoping constantly being there will help. And there we got my tie there and it will tie across like that. So this is cute. So the next steps are to bind the neckline and hem it and then we're done. So, so exciting. Um, what I'm going to do is we have two very long pieces of binding which I'll get. So we need to prepare these into bias binding. So first of all, we've got to sew the short ends together. So we get one giant piece of bias binding. And then we're gonna bind the whole neckline and then leave some spare hanging off and that's gonna be tying to the inside here, this strap, 
and then the other one will tie to the outside. Um, and then we will finish off the raw edges on the bottom of the skirt. But firstly, I need to have a quick shower because I'm working today. Um, so I'm going to sew the ends of these together, iron them, and then go and have a shower and come back and um, bind the neckline of this dress for you guys. I'm so excited. edges it's not the neatest thing I've ever done in my life but honestly I'm getting a bit frustrated with this fabric like I love it but it's so slippery but we have a wrap dress yay so I just need to hem it but there's a couple of things that I sort of want to feedback on this pattern so lots of effort has been put into the bust side of it which is fabulous however I personally think that the back on this pattern is incredibly narrow and that's coming from somebody with already quite a narrow back so the sleeve head is going to there on me which is where my bra strap is it's like that yeah like next to my bra strap which is so far back which means when i try and reach up there's just no room equally when i try and move forward there's a huge like pull under the arm here so while i think it's been i know it was originally i think a bigger pattern and then sized down I think the grading has been done fantastically well on the bust, but I really don't rate the grading on the back or um, the sleeves. I just don't think it's it's uh, a great fit, if I'm honest. Like, I'm glad I have the bigger sleeves because it would be, I think cap sleeves would be so uncomfortable. But otherwise, yeah, I think the sleeves are the main issue, but the bust room's pretty good. It's a little bit gapy, but again, I am not wearing a bra that I would normally wear with a wrap dress. Um, so if I put one of my more structured bras on, it should fit better. But otherwise, I think it's a really nice fit. The tie works there. It's low without being too low. Obviously, I've got a t-shirt underneath, so it's quite hard to tell. Um, and there's a nice amount of flow to the skirt. Um, and I, I like it. So I'm going to hem it quickly, take some photos. I think I had, I had really high hopes for this pattern. I really did. Because wrap dresses are normally a huge pain for anybody with a bigger like with a bigger bust and particularly a bigger bust and a small waist so I'm really happy with the fit across the across the bust I think the darts are really nice and I like the shape of the sleeves my only two criticisms are there's no room in the back at all like I can't reach forward like if I do it's going to rip this whole bit here and I think that's partially because this cuff's too tight now I did use slightly stiffer interfacing but nothing that would make a difference it was roughly the same weight as the fabric maybe fractionally heavier but these cuffs are just way too tight so um i'm really gonna struggle like i don't think i'll be able to wear this for work i was hoping i could but i do an active job and i'm gonna rip this as soon as i reach for anything or hopefully these sleeves will um will loosen over time they should stretch i think but um that's that's kind of my only thing um is just the relationship from this sleeve all the way up to here isn't fantastic i would like to see more body in the sleeves but the bust waist fit is lovely and the length is really pretty so i don't know if you can see the length is like just my knees there so it's just just below my knee which is a really flattering length so let's get this hemmed all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for watching i haven't filmed a sew along in ages so it was nice to be back doing it properly. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. And don't forget, even if you are subscribed, to click the notification bell and then you will know every time I put out a new video. But it's been a pleasure. I've been so excited to do this video um, and I will be doing so along for a couple of the other things I mentioned in the poll. But thank you also for voting. I'm going to start doing this more where I ask you guys what so long you want to see because they're labour intensive to film um, and obviously I love doing them but I want to make sure I'm filming the ones you guys want to see uh, so keep an eye out on my community tab and help me choose some sew alongs going forward but thank you so much for watching guys and, and I will see you next time